Good morning, everybody. It is a beautiful day in the Missouri Ozarks. My goodness, no rain today, sunshine, some clouds, a breeze. It's a little bit windy, but I will take it. It's gonna be warm today, probably a little bit humid, but it is a beautiful morning. I'm excited this morning because it is spring and the garden is beautiful and is producing and it's been a long time since we've been really able to eat fresh produce. On our homestead, we are working so hard to try to raise as much of our own food as possible. And really it's just the two of us, Kevin and I. Uh, the kids are busy and you know, they've ha they have school, they've got activities and those kinds of things. Even though it's summer, they're still active in other things. And while they do help us uh, from time to time, ultimately it is just Kevin and I. We don't have any hired help around here, <laughs> uh, but we love what we do. Anyway, my point is we are excited that spring is here and that the harvest is starting to come in for spring vegetables, leafy greens, and those kinds of things because we are really trying hard to eat more traditionally, more like our grandparents or maybe even our great grandparents ate. You know, it wasn't really that long ago, maybe 50 years ago, 75 years ago, when you couldn't just go to town and there'd be a big supermarket there that had every single type of vegetable and fruit that you ever would think of needing. That's just something that's been pretty recent. And now you can get tomatoes any time of year and apples and pineapple and all those things, citrus, but they've come from far, far away. They've been sprayed with things that aren't very good for us. They've been irradiated if they're coming from outside of the United States. So our family has really made an effort to try to produce most of our own food. What that means for us though, is that we don't eat fresh all year round. We work our buns off in the spring and in the summer to preserve a lot of our food so that we can eat our homegrown food still in the winter. But by the time it's early spring, we are just desperate for fresh food. So this garden behind me is just filled with fresh food. And so we're excited to get all these amazing nutrients from the garden into our bodies. And so we get pumped up about fresh eating, eating seasonally on our homestead. Last night I made an awesome dinner for our family. I made Asian cabbage rolls. Now I thought I was being completely unique and inventive and I threw these amazing ingredients together. It tasted so good and I gave it to the family and we all enjoyed it. And then I thought, you know, I bet there's something similar to this online. And so I just did a quick search and come to find out like there are several recipes just similar to what I made, but I felt like I was doing something pretty special. Anyway, today I want to make those Asian cabbage rolls for you along with some other veggies from the garden that I'm gonna fix for a big lunch. I'm super excited to share with you how we eat here on the homestead, especially when things start coming in fresh in the early spring. So let's get harvesting so we can go right from the garden harvest to the house and have it for lunch. We definitely need some green onions for our lunch today. When Kevin and I planted these onions here, we planted them really close together. They're actually just the little onion bulbs that you get from the store. And our intention has been to harvest every other one as a green onion and that will allow extra space later on for the ones that are remaining to get a bulb. So that there is perfect. We need a couple more of these. Our turnips are almost all ready to harvest. There are some really nice sized ones. So I'm gonna pick quite a few of them for our lunch. Aren't these beautiful? We are so pleased with the way these turnips 
have turned out this spring. So we have everything that we need for the Asian cabbage rolls and the roasted turnips. So now we need to harvest our salad. I'm gonna start off with harvesting an entire head of this gorgeous lettuce. This is a variety of romaine. It's an heirloom variety from Baker Creek. I don't remember the name of it. It's some long name. It's a French word actually. And so I'm gonna harvest this entire head right down at the ground level. Isn't that beautiful? That is just gorgeous. But we're not done. We're not just gonna have lettuce in our salad. Let's find some other greens from within the garden to go in our salad. We're gonna harvest a few of the large leaves from these kale plants. Now this kale isn't doing super awesome for us, but it is providing enough for us to have within some salads. We're not terribly crazy about kale anyway. So to have it mixed in with a salad is better for us than just having a kale salad. The spinach is also looking fantastic. Pretty soon we need to do a giant harvest of this so I can blanch it and freeze it for the winter. But until then we can add fresh leaves to our salads. We're also gonna harvest some dill. Now the funny thing about dill is that it can potentially reseed everywhere and that has, that's what has happened here. Two years ago, we planted dill for the first time on our homestead and we let some of it go to seed and it went everywhere. And again, last year we let the seed grow up, turn into dill, reseed, and it has gone even more places since then. So we're planting one year of dill and I think we'll have dill forever. So anyway, in the middle of one of our lettuce rows and, and our kale row is this gorgeous plant of dill. So for our salad, I'm just gonna harvest a couple branches of it. It'll taste really great. All the veggies we harvested, I brought back in the house and they're all clean. The salad greens I've chopped up and ripped up and they're all waiting here for us. So let's get cooking. We're gonna start with the Asian cabbage rolls. Now I went out to the refrigerator and grabbed one of the cabbage heads that we harvested the other day. And so we'll be using one of those. I do wanna just quickly show you how I've packaged them for the refrigerator. I double wrapped them in plastic wrap. I've left a couple layers of the outer leaves on the cabbage to keep in some of the moisture. These leaves are gonna be a little bit on the tougher side, kind of like collards. They are edible, we're just not going to be using them today with our cabbage rolls. So I'm gonna take these off. And now we're gonna be down to this nice shiny head on the inside. I'm gonna remove the core of the cabbage so that it's easier for us to take the leaves off one by one. We're gonna be using the cabbage leaves whole, so we need to make sure that we can get them apart without splitting them or damaging them. To remove the core, I'm just gonna take a knife and stab down in the middle, kind of at an angle, and make a circle around that, being careful not to slip and cut my hand. And hopefully that will be able to just pop out. Yep, pretty much. It looks like some of the core is still in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to get that out of there. There we go. For this recipe, I need 12 leaves. We're gonna be making 12 of the cabbage wraps. So I'm just gonna count out 12 of them and set them aside. Okay, I have them all set aside. I'm going to save the remainder of this cabbage head for a cabbage salad later on. 
I gave each one of these a quick rinse. I'm not too worried about much because they were under those floating row covers and we don't spray with any chemicals. But just to be safe, I just gave them a quick rinse. These cabbage leaves are just too rigid to be using to fold up a filling inside, so we need to soften them a little bit in some boiling water. So let's take these over here, we'll put in a few at a time and take them out when they're a little bit more pliable. So I'm just gonna start putting these leaves in the boiling water. Uh, put them in there one at a time, and I put three of them in the pot. Poke them down there gently so that I don't rip them. And after just a little bit, they'll start softening up. I do keep them in there for, you know, two minutes or something like that before taking them out. You really can do this part of this process anytime. I just wanted to do it to get it out of the way so then these are just waiting for me after I get the filling ready. We will take these out of here and just put them, I fashioned this little plate with an upside down bowl and I'll just put them on here and stack them up so that the water can drain down underneath there and they can cool off. When they cool off, they'll stay soft. So it's not a big deal if you don't do this right before you fill them. So this one's ready. I'm just gonna take it out and spread it out over this bowl and take all of these out. And I'm just gonna repeat this entire process with all 12 of them. I'm just gonna stack them on top of each other. All of the cabbage leaves are done, so now I'm just gonna set these aside so we can start working on the filling. We're gonna be using ground pork today uh, from the pigs that we raised last year. I like to freeze them in flat uh, freezer bags so that I can put them in a warm sink and they will thaw out uh, just really quickly. Now this pork is super lean. It's a lot different than the pork you get from the grocery store. So in the pan I'm gonna be frying it in, we need to brown it. I actually need to add some oil. But today I'm gonna to be using lard that we rendered from our pigs. It will give it a really nice flavor. But if you don't have that, you can just use some other type of oil. If you are using ground pork with a higher um, fat content, you might not need any oil at all. Now, if you don't have ground pork or you don't eat pork or whatever the case is, you can definitely substitute ground turkey, ground beef, ground lamb, whatever it is that you prefer. We're just gonna stir this up and uh, brown it plain. We're not adding any seasonings at this time. The meat is done. And because ours is so lean and there really isn't much on the bottom as far as oil, I can just put this meat right into the mixing bowl. If you have a lot of fat or grease on the bottom of your pan, go ahead and drain that. Now we're gonna create the filling for inside of these cabbage rolls, starting with this meat. Now, I don't remember if I said before, but this was one pound of ground meat. We're gonna add to it one and a half cups of pre-cooked rice. Last night when I made this for dinner for our family, when I was testing it out, I made too much rice. So um, I'm gonna use one and a half cups of the leftover rice. If you don't have leftover rice, you'll just have to make rice when you're making everything else. So one and a half cups of the prepared rice, we're just gonna put that in here. I don't have much left, so I'm just gonna put it all in there. Mix that in. We're going to add four tablespoons of, well, soy sauce, but we actually make soy sauce, which is doesn't have any soy in it. Um, if you are interested in learning how to make Soy list, soy sauce. Um, we'll make sure to put a link to that video in a card up here. So four tablespoons of soy sauce and one tablespoon of sesame oil. Now we're also going to add two cloves of fresh garlic. Now just a couple of weeks ago, one of our subscribers sent me the most fantastic gift. I have never used well, she sent me these two things. This little rubber-like contraption, you can put a clove of garlic in. Does everybody else in the whole world know about this except me? <laughs> you put it in this little rubber contraption and you roll it on the counter 
and it takes the peel off. Look at that. The peel is like off. I've never used one and I hadn't heard of it before this and it works awesome. And also she sent me a garlic press. Now I have tried a garlic press in the past and it must have been a really cheap one because it did a terrible job and I, I think I just broke it the first time that I used it. But this one is really heavy duty and uh, it works fantastic. So you just put the clove in this little circle area and it has like pokey things on it which lines up with holes in the bottom and you press it through here and the garlic it comes out the other end and I just take a butter knife scrape it off there and do the same thing with the second one. There's a second one there. That'll give it a really nice flavor. So we have those three ingredients added in, mix that up so that the soy sauce and the sesame oil can start combining with the meat as well as being soaked up a little bit by that rice. I'm not gonna be adding any salt to this. Soy sauce, and actually our soyless soy sauce, has quite a bit of salt in it already, and so I don't wanna overpower the dish with any salt. So you go ahead and taste it at this point and see if you need to add any more salt. That's almost done. We need to add one more ingredient and then the filling will be all done. We are gonna chop up one of our green onions from the garden and add it to the filling. Taking off that little root end. And the white part here, I'm going to chop into, you know, the little circle things till we get up to the uh, leaf portion. But because we are going to be filling these in the cabbage leaves, the white part of the green onions is just a little too big. So I'm gonna kind of mince that into smaller pieces so that it will be smaller when we're filling the cabbage leaves. Put that right in the filling. And then I'm also going to chop up most, if not all, of these onion leaves. I think that's gonna be pretty good. Mix that in. Okay, that looks great. So it's time to start assembling the cabbage rolls. So let's get all set up for that. We need a baking pan and some oil. I'm gonna use some sunflower oil on the pan and I'm going to spread it around just with a brush. I'm also going to preheat the oven right now to 425. We're actually going to be able to bake these cabbage rolls and roast the turnips at the same time. And this is actually going to come together pretty quickly now. Okay, let's start assembling these. So I'm going to take one of these cabbage leaves and open it up like that. And I'm gonna to switch to a smaller manageable spoon. I'm gonna put two nice sized spoonfuls of this filling in kind of the center of the cabbage leaf, but a little bit oblong, I guess. Kind of like we're making a little burrito. And we're gonna fold this over one time here and then fold in the sides a little bit <clears throat> and then just fold it over, okay? and leave it just like that. Try that again over here. Fold it over, fold the sides in, and then fold it over again. We're just gonna keep on doing this until we have all 12 of them done. Okay, well, these are all done. I don't know what happened or how it happened, but somehow I came up with 13 of them, which actually ended up being perfect because I had some extra filling and a couple of them were small. So we're just gonna set these aside while we get the turnips ready. 
We love roasted turnips. Well, we really love roasted root vegetables of pretty much any kind. And these are super easy, okay? And it's nothing fancy, but it tastes amazing. We're just gonna chop these up, dice them, and put them on the baking pan. And we'll just add the oil and the seasonings right on the baking pan. One thing that is amazing about these turnips, now these are the purple top turnips. The outside is very thin, like the skin around it. So you don't need to peel it if you don't want to. I don't think I've ever peeled a turnip. Okay, they're all chopped up. I'm just gonna drizzle some oil on top. I'm using sunflower oil. We really have been liking sunflower oil versus vegetable oils, which are generally a GMO oil. Uh, we aren't really liking olive oil. The taste of it is too strong, regardless of what we um, have found. So the sunflower oil has been a good um, replacement for us, a good alternative. So I'm just gonna drizzle that with oil and then we'll mix that up. I would say I used a couple tablespoons. And I'm also going to use a nice pinch of salt. We use pink Himalayan salt. We really like it because it still has a lot of the minerals in it. It's not refined like table salt. And actually the sodium content is lower in a sea salt or the pink Himalayan salt than a table salt. We used to buy this on Amazon. Uh, you can check it out there, but right now we've been buying it in bulk from Azure Standard along with a lot of our other bulk products that we buy. So I'm just going to um, put in, like this is like maybe, you know, half of a teaspoon or something. Maybe I won't use all of it. We're just gonna mix that around, stir that up. By doing it this way, we're coating the bottom of the pan and the turnip pieces at one time. Save the dishes. Okay, we're gonna spread these out evenly. And so we're gonna put both this pan and the pan of cabbage rolls in the oven at the same time. I'm gonna bake them at 425 for about 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna switch the pans, put one, the one on top on the bottom and the one on the bottom on top. And what I'm hoping for is the turnips to get soft and both pans to start kind of caramelizing on the bottom. We really love the flavor of the roasted turnips when they've caramelized on the bottom a little bit. And then also, cabbage does the same thing. So everything inside of the cabbage wraps are already cooked. It's, it's cooked, so it's fine. We don't have to worry about like internal temperature or anything. But we want it to be nice and caramelized on the bottom, and it might even start to brown on the top, which would be so tasty. So all we need to do is finalize our salad. All the greens are pretty much ready. We need to add some of the dill that we picked, and we need to make a really quick vinaigrette. Okay, the greens are done. Let's make a quick vinaigrette. Now I'm just gonna wing it because I make this all the time, but I'll kind of give you the ratios anyway of what I'm using. So I'm gonna start out with sunflower oil again. You can use olive oil, we just don't have any. So I'm gonna use one third of this recipe of oil. So one part, okay? <laughs> one part oil, two parts whatever vinegar you want. Today I'm using balsamic vinegar. We absolutely love red wine vinegar, white wine vinegar. There, so that's about right. We're gonna add some salt. I would say, you know, a big pinch. That's maybe like a quarter of a teaspoon. Add some black pepper. Not a whole lot. We're gonna bring that fresh garlic back. Now in our vinaigrette, to sweeten it up a little bit, I prefer honey, but we're out of honey. So today I'm gonna to use a little bit of sugar just to sweeten it up a little bit. And we're gonna shake it up. 
Now this vinaigrette recipe is so versatile. A lot of times I'll put uh, dried herbs inside here like oregano or thyme. A little bit of red pepper flakes in there would be good. Today we're gonna keep it kind of simple because in the salad there's onion, there's dill, and a bunch of different kind of flavors, and I don't wanna compete too much with the flavors that we have going on in the main part of the meal. So we're gonna just let this sit and uh, meld together, marry if you will until everything else is ready, and then we'll stir up the salad. In the meantime, let's get ready for dinner. Originally, I wanted to make this for lunch, but time got away from me, and now we're gonna have it for dinner. The turnips are done. The cabbage rolls are done. The turnips took about 40 minutes total, and the cabbage rolls about 25 or 30 minutes. All we need to do is add the vinaigrette to our salad, toss that a little bit, and then we can plate our dinner. Everything looks fantastic. Let's start off with our cabbage rolls and some of these amazing turnips. They look so nice and browned. And gorgeous salad. Nice big helping. Those pieces look a little big. Oh well, it's too late to cut them up now. Okay, let's see how everything tastes. First, the cabbage rolls. They're not gonna be quite as hot because they got done before the turnips. Mmm. So good, you guys. And the turnips. was so soft. They almost turned kind of caramelized and they're much more sweet. Definitely not pungent like when they're raw. And this salad, I have been smelling the dill since I started making dinner. Mmm. That vinaigrette is amazing. And even though I don't have honey, it's still a really nice amount of sweetness to balance out the sourness and tartness of that vinegar. It's so good. You know, there really is no comparison to grocery store food and homegrown, home-raised food. The flavors are all just completely different. So are the textures. This lettuce is so mild and so are the greens that should be a little bit on the bitter side. It's so early in the spring that everything tastes so good. You guys, I hope that our lifestyle, our garden, our cooking, I hope it encourages you to maybe take a little bit of a step toward being a little more self-sufficient and growing and raising some of your own food. So I hope we are an encouragement to you guys. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today, harvesting from the garden and then turning that into an awesome meal for our family. If you are enjoying our channel, we would love for you to subscribe. And if you would share this with someone else who you think would enjoy it, we would appreciate it so much. Until next time, you guys, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless.